everybody on Facebook. Uh, we are live today for a live Q&A. If you will just bear with me, I'm going to get set up so I can see your feed while I'm getting ready. I'm also going to go to Instagram live and I'm going to go here so I can see your questions and answers while we're doing this. So hop on in, tell me where you're from, say hello. And uh, I look forward to talking to you today. I'm here live for your questions. Like I said, just hop on in. I'm going to get all the things set up so that I can see you guys in real time, see your questions. So just hang in there for a moment. And we'll be right with you. But while I'm waiting, just pop in, tell me where you're from, say hello. And I'm here to answer your questions. We're going to talk about gut health today and really anything else that's on your mind. But for sure, gut health would be a great topic. I'm going to go live to Instagram here as well. Hello, everybody on Instagram. It's Dr. Jill live today for live q and I'm on both Facebook and Instagram. Um, like I've been doing the last several months, last Friday of the month, four o'clock mountain, you can find me here. I'm here live to answer your questions. I want to talk about gut health today, but just uh, want to say hello to everybody joining me on both Instagram live and on Facebook. Pop in, say hello, tell me where you're from and throw in any questions that you might have. Like I said, for now, I want to start with some gut health. Gut seems to be the theme of so many issues and so many things. So hopefully that will be relevant to you. But if you have any other questions about mold, chronic illness, chronic fatigue, complex uh, illnesses of any type, let me know your questions. I'm here live to answer your questions and just say, so please stop by, say hello, wherever you're at. Hi, Tinkin. Um, hello, everybody on Facebook as well. So always so fun to be here with you uh, live. So just as we get everybody popping in, I'll say hello. And of course, you guys probably know if you followed me at all, I have a new book out. This is like seven years in the making. Um, so this, uh, again, you're probably tired of hearing me, but I just want to inspire and impact as many lives as possible. If any of you read it, um, hi from Illinois, hi from Tennessee on Instagram. Hello, everybody. Um, please, you know, share with your friends, your family. The goal of this, it's really a memoir. It's my journey through cancer and Crohn's disease and biotoxin, Lyme, mold-related illness, all of the above, and um, the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to inspire and hopefully help you in your journey. So, okay, I see Sarah has a question. We'll be right with you in a moment. What do you recommend for gut health and weight loss? We're going to talk about gut health today. And again, I am on both Facebook and Instagram. So if you see me kind of looking around, I'll try to address everyone, um, on whatever screen you're on. But like I said, um, just want to remind you, this is available Amazon, anywhere you get books. And if you want to go to Read Unexpected, maybe you already have a copy of the book. If you have, like I said, please share a review, tell your friends and family, um, you know, share what you know or what you liked about it. Um, would love to hear the feedback, whatever that is. And if you haven't stopped by to wherever you purchased the book, um, or if you got a free copy, leave a review on Amazon. Um, today, though, let's get to today's topic. So mold exposure, I see someone asking about that reflux, I see someone asking about that um, weight loss and gut health from Sarah, we'll talk about that. What about heartburn? Okay, so I'm going to kind of file these away in my head, and we're going to start addressing these things. Um, first of all, many times, um, I wanted to talk about SIBO, I just wrote an article last week, um, I'm going to grab that link and try to post it for you wherever you're listening. Um, but if you look at my blog, just jillcarnian.com and click on the blog link. So jillcarnian.com is my website. Under the blog, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of articles on gut health and mold. And so if you're looking for information, it's all um, there. So I'm going to talk about basic gut health. And I see... Um, F-M-V-I-C-K-1, uh, um, I will respond with some of my favorite things today. In fact, one of the things I'm really excited to share today is so many people have issues with SIBO. How many of you out there say hello, wave, say yes, amen, whatever, if you've heard of SIBO or you've suffered with SIBO, SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So SIBO, what is this? So SIBO is really the underlying uh, cause for 60 to 80% of inflammatory, I'm sorry, not inflammatory, irritable bowel syndrome. So if you've been told you have irritable bowel syndrome, which means more days than not, you have alternating either diarrhea or constipation, gas or bloating, just symptoms in the gut, right? So your doctor's like, oh, you have IBS. There's not much we can do. Here's maybe a med to stop the spasms or to help the pain, but there's not a lot of great solutions unless you're seeing a functional medicine doctor, but the root cause of 60 to 80% of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, 
is SIBO. So what's SIBO? SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's basically most of our bacteria should be housed in the colon. And what happens is either due to a, a leaky ileocecal valve, which is the juncture between the large and small bowel, or due to not enough stomach acid, breaking down the bacteria and preventing too much overgrowth, or due to lack of digestive enzymes or poor motility, there's a, a thing in the small bowel called the migrating motor complex. And this is our uh, motility uh, session from the small bowel. I kind of think of it like, you know, if you go to the ice hockey games in between periods, there's that thing called the Zamboni, which goes across the ice rink and clears it and makes it beautiful again between the periods. I think of the migrating motor complex in your small bowel, kind of like a Zamboni. So it's pretty cool. The Zamboni between meals and at bedtime overnight, it clears out your small bowel. Your small bowel should be relatively sterile. Um, thank you, Roots Health, for your congratulations. Uh, so appreciate that. So your small bowel should be relatively sterile, right? But what happens is again, poor ileocecal function, maybe Crohn's or colitis or inflammation in those areas, lack of stomach acid, lack of uh, motility, um, uh, sometimes lack of bile acid, bile sterilizes the bowel and helps that Zamboni, that thing that clears out the small bowel work better. All of these things and lack of digestive enzyme, like pancreatic insufficiency, um, even things like chronic Lyme disease can cause, cause gastroparesis where the bowel doesn't move normal or the stomach doesn't empty normal. Now, just recently, I, I wrote articles both on Lyme disease and gut manifestations. That was just this week. And I, a week or two ago, wrote an article specific about SIBO. So please go to jillcarnan.com, read it. It's all free. Just jillcarnan.com under blog. All this information is there as well. But today I wanted to talk about SIBO because it affects so many of you. And there's another cousin to SIBO called SIFO, that small intestinal fungal overgrowth. And what this is, is basically there gets an overgrowth of yeast in your belly. And nowadays, with poor immune systems and more um, refined carbohydrates and high fructose corn syrup in our uh, beverages and things, there is a lot more fungal overgrowth than there ever used to be. So sometimes people will have both SIBO and SIFO. So one of the really exciting things I wanted to share today is there is a um, product that, so there's research on things like Zyfaxin or the generic Rifaximin, which is an antibiotic that's non-absorbable and treats uh, regular hydrogen SIBO. So first of all, how do we get this diagnosed? The technical diagnosis is a breath test. Your gastroenterologist could do this. Your um, primary doc could do this. I order them through a kit where I send them to the patient at home and you can do it from home. And a good SIBO test is going to test hydrogen SIBO, methane SIBO, which is a special kind of SIBO that needs extra antibiotics to treat it. It's not treated by just the Zyfaxin. You need both Zyfaxin and Neomycin or Zyfaxin and Metronidazole or something like that. Now, these are the medications, right? But they did a study, it's been a while now, um, with herbal products. And I actually have a SIBO um, protocol that I have at drjillhealth.com. So drjillhealth.com, if you search SIBO, you will see, and I'll put this in for those of you on Facebook, it's a little harder for me to send the leak link on um, Instagram. But if you search um, SIBO trio on drjillhealth.com, you'll find this. It has three products, <clears throat> SB Dysbio for small bowel, SB Fungo for the yeast, and SB Oregano, which all three together, these products were actually studied head to head against the drugs Cyfaxin. And guess what? The herbs outperformed the medication. So I am so excited to have this to offer patients. The course is two caps of each of those three for eight weeks. So sorry, two caps twice daily for, for um, each of those three products. And again, you can find them at drjillhealth.com under SIBO, S-I-B-O, it's called the SIBO trio. I have been so, so excited to put this together because it's one of the things that is just affecting so many people out there. And if you have IBS and you've never been able to get over that, the great thing about this regimen too, is basically um, if you have the fungal overgrowth along with the bacterial, if you just have the bacteria, the SIBO, the antibiotics work, but you could flare the yeast. But if you have both yeast and bacteria, the herbal regimen works better because it covers both the yeast and bacteria. So just again, if you're just joining me now, drjillhealth.com, SIBO trio, you can get that. And it's a regimen that has actually been studied against the medications I fax and, and more effective. So that's the background on SIBO. So let's go upstream and say, why would someone, um, 
thanks for joining us, Pam Vic. And uh, thank you for sending good wishes on the book and appreciate your feedback. So everybody who's just joining us now, we're talking about SIBO, we're talking about gut health, we're talking about IBS and solutions. And I was just sharing my herbal protocol, which is called the SIBO trio, and it's available at drjillhealth.com. Okay. So enough of that commercial. Um, let's talk about other things. So upstream, if you have low digestive enzymes, what you might notice is two or three hours after a meal, especially fatty foods, you feel really, really bloated. That's a sign of digestive insufficiency. And you could use something like digestive, um, digest complete digestive enzymes complete, which is also on drjillhealth.com. This has the bile. It has the stomach acid, the HCL, and it also has pancreatic enzymes all together in one. Um, another thing that could happen is if you have hypochlorhydria or low stomach acid, you might notice your nails have little white spots that can be a zinc deficiency, but also hypochlorhydria. Um, or if you have ridges, if you have vertical ridges on your nails, just look at them right now, um, that might be a sign of low um, absorption of protein. And that could be a sign of low stomach acid. These are all things we're talking about SIBO and the gut. And if you have poor gut health or... Um, issues with SIBO, you could have low stomach acid, you could have low pancreatic enzymes, you could have poor motility. Now, a few moments ago, I was describing the migrating motor complex, which is this basically small bowel motility that clears out the bowel between meals and keeps it sterile. And, and that's one of the ways to prevent SIBO. If that's not working, and I equated it to the Zamboni between periods of an ice hockey game where you clear out that, you know, the ice gets all clear. That's what happens in your small bowel. So one way to help that is to keep um, four to five hours between your meals or to not eat two hours before bedtime, that gives that migrating motor complex a chance to work and to clear out your small bowel. Um, one thing to do to treat SIBO as well is a lower FODMAP diet. You can find apps and things on the FODMAP diet, um, which is uh, taking away certain kinds of carbohydrates that feed SIBO and you tend to feel better. Now, a low FODMAP diet in general will starve your good microbiome. So I don't recommend the long, long-term low FODMAP diet, but if you're treating SIBO while you're doing the herbs, I mentioned the SIBO trio at drjillhealth.com, um, you can do the low FODMAP diet, low FODMAP diet, and it does help. Um, other things could be ileocecal dysfunction. So if anyone's had um, resection of their colon or surgery for Crohn's or colitis, um, sometimes they affect the ileocecal valve. And if you have no ileocecal valve or a dysfunctional one, you can get kind of like backflow from the from the contents of the colon, the microbiome, and it goes into your small bowel and then causes overgrowth. So these are just some of the things that affect SIBO and SIFO. Now, back hey, everybody, I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science and Faith is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr and mold and biotoxin-related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. SIBO and SIFO. Now back to some of your early questions. If you're still on here, gosh, we had lots of questions, lots of questions about reflux. Let's talk about reflux for a minute. Um, say hello. Let me know if you're suffering from reflux. And I do want to also, um, Jube, you said, um, Copper toxicity, connection between birth control. Okay, I'm going to come back to that one, copper toxicity. So let's talk a little bit about the GERD, the reflux. So one of the things that surprises people that's a cause of reflux is histamine. So if you have mast cell activation, histamine intolerance, or issues with histamine in general, um, often that histamine issue is a cause of reflux. So I've seen people even who go into moldy homes and they have more issues with reflux after mold exposure. So if any of you out there have mold issues, you might notice you have some heartburn or reflux after an exposure. So what do you do? So first thing would be, I love deglycerized licorice. We have a DGL plus, which has a couple extra ingredients from drjillhelp.com DGL plus, and you can take one cap prior to meals. That can be really, really helpful for heartburn. If you need something a little bit stronger, you can go get a uh, gut shield also at drjillhealth.com. This is a combination powder product that you can mix in water and take prior to your meals a couple times a day. Really, really helpful at soothing the esophagus. 
So those are two of my favorites. We also have gut calm. Gut calm, I tend to work, use more for eosinophilic esophagitis or some of the esophageal irritations, or if you have um, severe heartburn where you're getting damage to the esophagus, that um, gut calm powder can be helpful. And again, you can find any of those at drjillhealth.com. So um, that's for heartburn. If you want to do any prescriptions or other things, things that can help heartburn, of course, would be like your over-the-counter famotidine. Um, I don't love those long-term, but to get you through a crisis, that can be really, really helpful because that's a histamine blocker. And um, like I said, deglycerous licorice, DGO plus is a product I love. And then gut calm powder and gut shield powder are two really effective things. Now, sometimes it's because you have poor motility. So you're not emptying the stomach and you get heartburn for that reason. So my motility booster is really helpful. That's just a combination of artichoke and ginger. Love, love, love this because those foods will actually help with gastric motility. So if you're suffering from like feeling really full, like you're not emptying your stomach, first of all, you might want to find out why is there lime or mold or other things, but second motility booster will also be really helpful for that. And that can be taken twice a day before a meal. Okay. So back to, I think we had a question about uh, candida and copper and hormones. So basically copper tends to go with estrogen dominance and zinc goes with progesterone as a matter of if someone has copper toxicity or estrogen dominance, typically giving progesterone naturally or giving zinc will help to lower that copper. Like we know from Wilson's disease, which is a disease where there's excessive copper, um, giving high dose zinc is a first line therapy. So anywhere from 50 to hundred milligrams or more per day under your doctor's supervision, because the other downside of that is if your copper is too low and you take too much zinc, you're going to lower it even more and copper, even though we don't want too much and more, pe more often people have um, copper toxicity than too little. If you have too little, you can't make white blood cells, which helps you fight infections. So you don't want too much or too little. Um, okay. Hopefully that answered your questions. Which of my products do I recommend for basic gut health? So basic gut health, we've got, we have quite a few probiotics. I'm going to tell you about a few of them. Probably my favorite is spore and we have a spore probiotic with IG. Again, these are at drjillhealth.com. The spore probiotic with IG is basically the spores, which I love for helping diversity for tough guts and the immunoglobulins. The IG is basically a passive immune system for your gut to help bind toxins and pathogens and H pylori and things candida. So I really like that combination probiotic for those guts that have a lot of dysbiosis and abnormal stuff going on. Um, for your daily, there's a probiotic daily essentials. This is a great one for kids over the age of eight, um, really anyone who doesn't have a huge amount of gut issues. And then there's a probiotic 100 billion for if you have Crohn's or colitis, or you've just gone through antibiotic course, that's a little bit stronger probiotic. And then we have the probiotic with sacro. That would be someone who has yeast issues because it gives you that regular good probiotic and also saccharomyces velarde, which is a good yeast that tends to crowd out the bad yeast. So basically tough gut, SIBO, SIFO, um, um, low diversity, the spore probiotic with IG for kind of your daily essentials, your kids um, probiotic daily essentials for someone who needs a little bit more support probiotic 100 billion. And then for someone who's dealing with yeast probiotic with Saccharo um, would be your best bet. And those are all at drjillhealth.com. Um, you're mentioning good probiotic for Hashimoto's. I would probably go with the spore um, probiotic with IG if you need immune support or if you have dysbiosis, um, or if you know you have fungal issues, I would go with this, the uh, probiotic with saccharo, the probiotic with saccharo. Now, if you just want saccharomyces and you already have a spore, you already have a regular probiotic, you can get saccharo force at drjillhealth.com, saccharo force. And that's S-A-C-C-H-A-R-O, I believe. <laughs> um, it's kind of spelled funny because saccharomyces is a weird spelling of a word, but saccharo force is the one that is specific for yeast or if you have a course of antibiotics for some other reason and you're taking antibiotics and you need support, um, Saccharo Force is a perfect combination to take if you're on antibiotics or you have a course for some other reason that'll protect you from antibiotic associated side effects. So that's probiotics, GERD, SIBO. We've covered a lot so far. Let me see what other questions we have here. Heartburn we talked about, um, reflux we talked about, just to review reflux heartburn, my DGL plus prior to meals, motility booster can help. And then gut shield powder. Those would be my go-to and you're welcome. Everybody. Uh, I see one here from roots health. Um, oh, thanks for all. Thanks for all you do. You're welcome. Uh, how do you address mold with a three month old baby? Okay. This is a little tough, but okay. First of all, three month old, six month old, hopefully you're still breastfeeding if possible, no guilt if you're not, but if you are, um, your mother's milk is going to contain probiotics and immunoglobulins, which are some of the most powerful things you could do for baby. So first of all, if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, do not start a detox program. 
no matter what, because your breast milk will contain toxins and you don't want to be dumping toxins to your baby. Now, if you must do a detox or something happened, um, you can also pump and dump and just don't give the baby the breast milk while you're detoxing. But if you're not detoxing and you need to help baby who's been exposed, what I would do is as the mother who's breastfeeding, you take probiotics, the, the spore probiotic or the actually for a breastfeeding mother, I would go with the probiotic daily essentials. Cause that's just a wonderful, well-rounded full of lactobacillus for the baby. And then I would actually take bovine immune globulins, our product gut immune caps or gut immune powder would be the one that would be best. And that immunoglobulin will actually transfer to the baby through the mother's milk. Um, like I said, I wouldn't do much detox during breastfeeding or pregnancy. Okay, just seeing if there's any other questions. And talk about copper toxicity. Do I like chromalin from Tinkin? Hi, Tinkin. Um, chromalin is a wonderful thing for food sensitivities, chromalin sodium, and you can get it as prescription. It's usually in vials. So you can compound it in capsules and it can help with mast cell activation. Or if you have a lot of food reactions, chromalin can be really, really helpful because it kind of decreases that histamine mast cell reaction when you eat food. Hi, Amy. Can low alkaline phosphatase be caused by mold toxicity? So low alk phos, let's talk. I have an article on that too, because it's something not many people are talking about. High, we know can be associated with liver gallbladder issues, but low alk phos can be associated with number one, zinc deficiency, but number two, uh, B6 deficiency. So I would check those two nutrients and see if you're low and then add them back and see if that alk phos doesn't go right up. So I suppose because you could have mineral depletion with mold, you could have a low alk phos with mold exposure, but there's not necessarily a direct correlation with mold and low alk phos. Um, so yeah, keep the questions coming. I went through most of them on there. Let me see on Facebook if there's any other questions. Looks like someone wants to know about mass select activation um, and just autoimmunity in general, what to do with the gut. So um, let me get a link to the sacro because someone's asking about that while we're talking about autoimmunity in the gut. Autoimmunity in the gut, I would probably recommend um, the, so I'm putting in for those of you on Facebook, I'm giving you guys a link to the sacro um, for us in the sacro essentials here. And if you have autoimmunity, I think the spores are a good idea or the daily essentials, something really simple. So that's the sacro force for those of you on Facebook. Um, it's a little hard to type it in on Instagram, so I apologize. Um, but if you guys go to drjillhealth.com and you search for the probiotics I've been naming here, you can find those real easily on the website. Um, but be sure the big thing I wanted to share today that's brand new is that SIBO trio. You know, have someone who has SIBO that you know of, or you yourself, this trio is um, SB Dysbio, SB Fungo, and SB Oregano. It's a powerhouse for SIBO and SIBO. The treatment is two caps twice a day for eight weeks, and it is highly effective. It was studied against the antibiotics and was more effective. So really, really powerful stuff. And that's available at drjillhealth.com for SIBO or SIBO or both. Um, oh, hi, Vicki. You're literally at the water's edge reading my book right now. Oh, thank you. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope it's keeping you entertained and also inspired. Thanks for sharing that. And thank you for all of you who've already bought the book and shared with me the inspiration. It is literally the reason I exist is to inspire. So it makes me very happy when I hear those stories from you. Um, so we'll do one last question here and then we'll wind up for today and reminder, just, you can join me here on last Friday of the month at four o'clock mountain. I'll be on both Instagram and Facebook answering your questions live. Um, last question from Mira on Facebook is have you, if you tested positive for Babesia, does that mean you have Lyme? So tick-borne or vector-borne infections can be carried by many things, not just ticks. Typically ticks carry Borrelia, which is Lyme, but we know that um, spiders and mosquitoes in some cases, and even bed bugs and um, fleas can carry things like Babesia. Babesia is a bloodborne parasite like malaria that can cause night sweats, air hunger, disequilibrium, anxiety, um, weight gain, all kinds of things. So if you test positive for Babesia, it does not necessarily mean that you have Lyme. But very frequently, people will have Lyme, Babesia, Bartonella, they'll have multiple infections altogether. 
but um, it does not necessarily mirror mean that you have Lyme. You could just have Babesia by itself. And the treatments of that would include usually their protozoa types of cyst forms and meds like cryptolepis tends to be really well. And we have a wonderful liquid tincture of cryptolepis at the website, drjillhealth.com. Super pure, super clean. If you wanted to start something, go very gently. Um, but cryptolepis is powerful for Babesia. It's actually powerful for Lyme as well. In a John Hopkins study, it was one of the best performing um, both Japanese knotweed and cryptolepis for Lyme. Um, so that's the deal on Babesia. Drugs for Babesia tend to be Mepron or Malarone. Those are two of the big players. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining me today on Facebook and Instagram. I really appreciate it. Before I go, if you're still here, I'm going to give away a copy of my new book. So if you're still here, you can win this today. Right now, all you have to do um, if you're here and you're not following me, you have to follow me and to get the book. And if you're already following me, all you need to do for either follow me um, and send me a direct message, just as in, um, unexpected book. Okay. Let me be clear. Follow me. Number one, number two, just send me a direct message. that says unexpected book. I will pick a winner in the next 24 hours. I will text you direct message, ask for your address. If you're willing to give me that, I will send you a free signed copy of my book. So please, if you're here still, uh, pop in, tell me you want the book and I will pick someone to randomly win the book. Um, thank you guys again today. Come join me again next um, last Friday of the month in June. Um, and we will see you all soon. Thanks again for joining me today.